In the late 19th century, Ethiopia was a landlocked country with limited access to the outside world. The only way to get goods and people in and out of Ethiopia was by using a long and treacherous journey through the mountains. This made it difficult for Ethiopia to trade with other countries and to attract foreign investment. King Menelik II, the ruler of Ethiopia at the time, saw the importance of infrastructure development for Ethiopia's economic development. He knew that a railway would be essential for connecting Ethiopia to the rest of the world and for boosting trade. Menelik II faced many challenges in building the railway. The terrain was difficult, and the workforce was limited. But Menelik II was a determined leader, and he was not deterred by the challenges. He mobilized the entire country to build the railway, and he imported foreign technology to help with the construction. The Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway was completed in 1917, and it was a major achievement for Ethiopia. The railway made it easier to transport goods and people between Ethiopia and the rest of the world, which helped to boost trade and economic growth. Today, construction is one of the largest industry sectors in Ethiopia, second only to agriculture in terms of employment generation. The government's focus on eradicating poverty, expanding infrastructure, and creating job opportunities has led to the launch of both mega and minor construction projects. From the relatively minor Unity Park, which cost only 5 million Ethiopian bay, to mega projects like the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which costs a little less than 5 billion US dollars, the Ethiopian government is not afraid to invest heavily in the infrastructure development. 15. Odwa Center The Addis Ababa City Administration in Ethiopia has began the construction of Odwa Center, also the anti-colonial struggle memorial center, in the heart of the city. The center is being constructed on a piece of land that was initially given out to the Ethiopian-born Saudi billionaire Mohammed Ali El Amadi's company, Midrock Construction, but later taken back by the city administration. The structure of Odwa Center is intended to commemorate the triumph of Odwa and Patriots. It will reflect the history of the victory in its entirety. It is not quite obvious why the Addis Ababa city administration did not prefer to feature the Ethiopian G's script by symbol instead of the letter A in the building design. Odwa Center will consist of a museum, a meeting hall with a total capacity of over 2,000 people, three smaller auditoriums with a capacity of 400 people, a 600-car capacity parking space, a cinema theater, a library, a gym, cafeterias and a childcare center among other leisure facilities. Fourteen, Ethiopia's new dry ports in Hawassa and Jima. The Ethiopian Shipping and Logistics Services Enterprise ESLSE, announced that it would start construction of dry port terminals in Hawassa and Jima within the next few months. Expansion works are also underway on eight existing dry ports to facilitate logistics and meet the demands of customers. The Hawassa dry port will cover 3.5 hectares of land and the Jima dry port 20 hectares. The preliminary construction phase of each project will cost $2 million. The construction of the new dry port terminals is part of ESLSE's plan to increase its capacity to handle 10 million tons of cargo per year by 2025. The enterprise also plans to invest in new vessels and equipment to improve its services. In February this year, ESLSE inaugurated Diadawa Dry Port and Terminal which was built at a cost of 68 million US dollars on 34.1 hectares of land. The dry port has a capacity to handle 128,000 containers annually when it becomes fully operational and is expected to reduce foreign currency expenditures. 13. Barana Resilient Water Development The Barana Resilient Water Development for Improved Livelihoods program, Phase 1, focuses on the impact of droughts and sustainable recovery and resilience in water-related sectors using an Integrated Water Resources Management IWRM, approach. It aims to provide access to integrated, sustainable, climate-resilient and gender-sensitive water and sanitation services to pastoralist communities in the drylands of the Barana region of Oromia. The program covers 62 rural villages, Kabyles, and 12 small towns in the with an estimated 308,576 people, of which 50% are female, and 975,750 livestock. 
The first phase of the program will provide water services to an estimated 24,115 people, 8% of the total population, and 83,000 livestock, 9% of the total livestock, in the three wardos of Elwea, Dablak and Yabelo in the Berena zone of the Oromir region. It will provide the basic infrastructure to anchor the second phase of monitoring, which is planned to be implemented in parallel with this phase, as soon as resources from the next loan cycle are confirmed. There are three components for phase one of the program, namely, I, water development and institutional sanitation, two, integrated watershed management and institutional strengthening, and three, program management. The program development objective is to improve access to climate resilient and gender sensitive integrated and sustainable water and sanitation services to pastoralist communities in dryland areas of the Berena area of Oromia region for improved health, livelihoods, nutrition and food security. Twelve Bahia Da International Stadium. The government of Ethiopia allocated over 14 billion bear for the completion of stadiums under construction in various cities, including the renovation of Addis Ababa Stadium in the capital. According to the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, the construction of 13 stadiums is set to be concluded in the coming 10 years. The budget allocation is mainly set to finalize the incomplete stadiums in regional states. The construction includes Addis Ababa, Bahia Da, Hawassa, Nikamit, Semera, and other regional stadiums. The construction of Bahia Da Stadium, which has been under construction at the expense of the Amhara Regional State, began in 2010. The stadium with a capacity of 45,000 spectators is earmarked to cost 2.6 billion bay, 616 million 155,035 bay has been spent so far. However, the government has budgeted an additional 2 billion bay for its completion in the next 10 years. It is to be recalled that Bahia Da Stadium has been banned from hosting international matches by CAF following a report from its inspection team. CAF reported that there were several issues that were not up to standard. 11. Addis Ababa Largest Private Housing Project Addis Ababa City Administration, through its 70 30th Public-Private Partnership Scheme, has approved construction of what will be the largest private housing investment in the city's history a $8 billion housing project by Ovid Group. Land is slated to be allocated in the coming days to the contractor free of lease payment. The administration has registered over 1 million applicants waiting for housing, but through its low-cost housing program it delivered only around 200,000 units over 13 years barely 20% of the target. At this pace, Satisfying total registered demand may take 50 plus years. Facing this failure, officials turned to an alternative the 7030 Public Private Partnership Scheme. Under this model, private developers fund and build 70% of housing units for sale while giving 30% to the government for low income residents. The new project aims to address Addis Ababa's growing housing shortage and meet residents' demands. City officials selected 68 local and foreign companies to develop housing complexes, including Midrock Investment Group, Ovid Group, Flintstone Homes, Ini Construction, and Gift Real Estate. Ovid Group will construct 60,000 of the 100,000 planned units on a 460 square meter plot in Bow Balbula, set to obtain the land next week. Funding sources for the complex include Ovid Group's partners, foreign loans, certain domestic loans, institutional sales, and contributions from the diaspora. Ovid also plans to establish a mortgage bank. 10. Ethiopia Digital Foundations Project Digital Ethiopia is an initiative led by the government of Ethiopia to leverage digital opportunities and propel Ethiopia into an innovative, knowledge-based economy. Aligned with key national and international strategies, including the government's homegrown economic reform agenda, 10-year development plan, and the African Union Continental Digital Transformation Strategy, Digital Ethiopia sets out a vision for the journey Ethiopia must take to ensure all citizens are digitally empowered and the Internet serves as a tool for building a flourishing Ethiopian society. Bringing together government, private sector and development agency actors, 
Digital Ethiopia identifies the foundational cross-sector initiatives necessary to unlock the country's digital economy, as well as four strategic priority sectors which can leverage innovative and emerging technologies to spearhead Ethiopia's digital transformation. The Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Portal of Finance, MOF, has received financing from the World Bank toward the cost of the Ethiopia Digital Foundation project. Digital Foundation's project is to be financed through a 200 million US dollar equivalent IDA that will involve a range of stakeholders through five components having a leading implementing partner like the Ethiopian Communication Authority, ECA, Ethiopian Education and Research Network, Ethernet, and Portal of Finance including the Portal of Innovation and Technology, Mint, as main coordinating and beneficiary institution. The project is intended to lay the building blocks to develop Ethiopia's digital economy through support to the policy and regulatory environment, improving infrastructure and quality of broadband connectivity and support the digitalization of services, and promote digital entrepreneurship. The project development objective is to improve Ethiopia's competitiveness in the digital age through increased inclusiveness and affordability of digital services and through digital job creation. The project will be implemented in all regions of the country including the federal, regional and WOIDA levels. The project benefits the public by creating new opportunities for digital transformation in government and education and new opportunities for innovation and entrepreneurship. Zero 09 Fairfax Oil Refinery Project in Ethiopia Fairfax Africa Fund, a US-based investment firm, in collaboration with multiple partners from Asian countries is planning to build an oil refinery in Ethiopia with a total investment cost of 4 billion US dollars. Zemedena Nigatu, global chairman of Fairfax Africa Fund, told the reporter that his company has undertaken the feasibility study. According to Zemedena, Fairfax Africa Fund is working on the project with Asian investors whose core business is oil trading and infrastructure development. Our initial plan was for our investors to be from Asia but more recently, we were approached by American financiers who are interested in the project. So, we may end up with financiers both from Asia and the US, he told the reporter. The investors have evaluated several places including Djibouti where the oil refinery will be built and finally selected Awash town, 221 kilometers east of Addis Ababa. Awash is found in the Afar regional state in the Ethiopia-Djibouti corridor where the National Fuel Depot of the Ethiopian Petroleum Supply Enterprise is located. Awash is selected as the ideal place by the authorities, Zemedena said. According to him, initially, the refinery will have the capacity of processing 6 million metric tons of crude oil, equal to approximately 120,000 barrels per day. Ethiopia currently uses 3 million metric tons of fuel annually. The refinery's capacity will eventually be expanded to 12 million metric tons per year. The total investment cost is estimated at $4 billion. The planned refinery will serve the East African market. It will primarily serve Ethiopia. It is part of Ethiopia's energy security program. The refinery will also cater the needs of other East African nations, Zemedena said. 07 Ogaden Djibouti Gas Pipeline Project In February 2019, Ethiopia and Djibouti signed a Memorandum of Understanding for the construction of a $4 billion, 767 km natural gas pipeline from the Hilola and Caleb gas fields in Ethiopia Somali, formerly Ogaden, region, to a new port east of Djibouti city in Djibouti. The pipeline would be built by Chinese firm GCL Poly, which is also developing the gas fields. The pipeline would transport 12 billion cubic meters per year of gas, of which 10 billion cubic meters would be exported to China. At the time, GCL Poly said it expected exports to begin in 2021. Ethiopia's parliament approved the pipeline's construction in December 2019. 3. Djibouti plans to build the Djibouti LNG terminal in Damad Jug to export the gas. As of September 2021, there was not yet evidence that construction had begun on the pipeline. This delay was reportedly not a surprise, given the political and security risks to the oil and gas sector in the region. Zero 06 Safaricom Data Center Close to Addis Ababa 
Safaricom is planning to build a new data center outside Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. At the same time, Red Fox's data center at the same park has gone live. Safaricom said this month that it has signed a developed land sublease agreement with Industrial Parks Development Corporation IPDC, to build a new Tier 3 quality telco cloud data center in the latter's ICT park outside the capital. Specifications or timelines weren't shared, but the company will reportedly invest around $60 million into the project. Safaricom said this will be its third data center in the country. Enwa Souza, CEO of Safaricom Ethiopia, said, We are excited to establish this win-win partnership with IPDC which will allow us to build our third data center in Ethiopia since Safaricom Ethiopia was awarded the Unified Telecommunication Service License in July 2021. The deployment comes as Safaricom looks to launch commercial services in the country and become Ethiopia's second telecoms operator. Until last year, the government-owned Ethio Telecom operated with a monopoly on the sector. However, in May 2021 a consortium led by Kenya Safaricom, Vodafone, and Japan Sumitomo were awarded a license to operate in the country. Earlier this year, Safaricom said a prefabricated data center had arrived in the city after being shipped in from China. The company has begun rolling out services in select cities across Ethiopia. This month the International Finance Corporation IFC, the World Bank's investment arm, announced plans to invest 158 million euros, 160 million dollars of equity into Safaricom Ethiopia. Zero 05 Addis Africa International Convention and Exhibition Center. Addis Africa International Convention and Exhibition Center or ASEC is a project that will benefit from Ethiopia's and especially Addis Ababa's increased connectivity and consolidation as an international hub. The center aims to give the country a big, first-class convention center to serve a host for major international conventions, exhibitions, ADN events. The center will also include a shopping mall and office spaces, together with public areas for recreation. The project is expected to cost over $49 million. The conclusion of this project will increase tourism and business traveler revenue. Some of the planned spaces. Shopping complex. Restaurants and food courts. Playgrounds. Outdoors performance centers. Multi-purpose hall. Exhibition hall. Conference and meeting halls. Auditoriums. Office spaces. 04 Lage Mega Project. Located in the capital of Ethiopia, Lage represents an integrated community comprising residential, commercial, hospitality, retail, and leisure facilities in a single, secure, and exclusive setting surrounding a park. The development spans an area of approximately 360,000 SQM in proximity to the Addis Bowl International Airport, with a rail line running along its northern edge. Lage is anchored by four- and five-star hotels supported by retail outlets, offices and residential buildings. The government of Ethiopia, in partnership with Eagle Hills, also aims to develop a social housing component within the master plan, where residential units will be built to permanently accommodate the existing residents currently living in the project site. Mohamed Alaba, chairman of Eagle Hills, said, as one of Africa's hidden gems, Ethiopia is rich in history, culture and natural beauty. Our vision is to bring attention to such locations across the globe, revealing the charm and potential within them and inviting future residents and tourists to consider making new homes for themselves there. La Guerre, translated from French to the station, was the main railway station in Addis Ababa, the terminal station of the first Addis Ababa Djibouti train line in the Horn of Africa. Completed in 1917, the station was a central part of the capital and the main source of traffic into the city. It includes a pedestrianized retail district with a wide range of indoor and outdoor food and beverage choices and also serves as a new commercial hub for the city. 03 Aluto Langano Geothermal Power Station Project The Aluto Langano Geothermal Plant, whose expansion is overdue, is going to get a fresh start. This follows the recently announced tender by the Ethiopian Electric Power EEP, to hire a contractor for the project and procure rigs to drill the wells. 
The procurement could cost the EEP approximately US $120 million. The plant is expected to generate 75 megawatts of energy from eight wells. The International Development Association IDA, of the World Bank has provided financial assistance of about US $126 million out of the total project cost of US $218 million. IDEA extended this support under its Geothermal Sector Development Project GDSP. Although it is the first geothermal plant in the country, it will be the third largest plant next to the 500 MW geothermal power generating plant in Kobeti Caldera, 250 km south of Addis Abeba, and Tulumoy, another 500 MW geothermal project in Oromia Regional State. Ethiopia has the capacity to generate 4,200 MW of energy. It also has the potential of producing 45,000 megawatts of hydropower, 10,000 megawatts of geothermal and 1.3 mmw of wind power. Ethiopia boasts of abundant geothermal potential. However, the country has been unable to match her neighbor, Kenya's installed geothermal power capacity of about 630 megawatts. Currently, the country is generating 120 megawatts of energy from the Ashkoda wind farm, 204 MW from Adama 1 and 2 wind farms and 300 MW from Aisha wind farm. It is also working on a cellar wind farm which will generate 100 MW of energy along with the three geothermal projects which are going forward. Zero 02. Prime Minister Office to Construct a 49 Billion Bear Palace the office of the Prime Minister is finalizing its preparation to construct a new national palace at a cost of 49 billion bay, when commenced the project will become PM Obi's most expensive mega-project to date. Also, the project will become the second biggest public project next to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which has costed over 130 billion bay thus far. Situated on a sprawling 503 hectares of land at Yeka Hill, in Yeka Sub City, the construction touches five wardos, which will harbor the construction of halls, three artificial lakes, housing units and road infrastructures, among other facilities. Part of the government's 10-year perspective plan, the project will see the evacuation of thousands of people. However, the residents will be given a chance to develop their own property on their land, if it fits the standard of the area where the palace will be built. According to the reporter, the UAE government will contribute a portion of the budget needed to construct the palace. Three man-made lakes will also be erected as part of the project and integrated into the newly constructed National Palace. Along with the Grand Jubilee, which is undergoing a 1 billion bear renovation, Menelik Palace, which now serves as the Prime Minister's home and office, will be converted into a national museum. 01. Mezab Tower the 70-story development will be located in Mozambique Street, Kirko Subcity, the country's capital city, Addis Ababa. The edifice, which upon completion will be 250 meters tall, is shaped like a mezob, which is a colorful hand-weaved Ethiopian basket that serves as a table-slash-household utensil where food is put on mostly during communal meals and will sit on 20,000 square meters of land. The US $681 million projects will feature hotels, shopping malls, a cultural center representative of all regions of Ethiopia, a gym and a golf club, among other things. The development is projected to be completed in five years' time. According to the architect, the design of Mezop Tower is unique and reflects Ethiopia's culture. The public-private partnership development upon completion will contribute to the inflow of tourists and will also enhance the positive image of the country. Reportedly, the Mezab Tower project is developed through a public-private partnership with the Ethiopian Ministry of Culture and Tourism, the Ministry of the Government of Ethiopia responsible for researching, preserving, developing, and promoting the culture and tourist attractions of the East African country and its peoples, both inside the country and internationally as the project owner. This will be a tower built well into the sky as a symbol of unity for tourists. The Mezop Tower will provide competent and sufficient human resources to the tourism industry upon its realization, said Hyred Castle. As we conclude this exploration of Ethiopia's ongoing mega-projects, it's clear that the country is making significant strides in its development and growth. With 15 major projects currently underway, 
Ethiopia is poised to become a major economic and cultural force in East Africa and beyond. As Ethiopia continues to push forward, it's exciting to imagine the possibilities that lie ahead for this vibrant and dynamic nation. So why not subscribe to our channel to stay informed and engaged with all the latest news and updates on Ethiopia's mega projects and beyond. By subscribing, you'll never miss a beat as Ethiopia continues its ascent to becoming a major economic and cultural powerhouse in East Africa and beyond.